Juma Nasanyana is one of the very few Kenyans to have walked the international runway alongside supermodels Naomi Campbell and Alec Weck, among others. Nasanyana was born in Lodwa, Turkana County, and was fortunate to attend school courtesy of an NGO. Having grown up seeing the harsh conditions in Turkana, she purposed to give back to her Turkana community as well as other communities where children go to school under extremely harsh conditions. At the onset of the coronavirus pandemic, the Ajuma Foundation designed and started donating exercise books across rural Kenya to empower rural areas academically. Tonight, the story of a supermodel with a heart for the children of this nation. She has graced many fashion shows across the world, featured in advertising campaigns, and endorsed top fashion designers and cosmetic brands. By the way, Lillian, did you know I was an athlete before that? Wow. Yeah, I ran. I was the national champion for Kenya for 400 wow. meters. Yeah, so I had a choice between modeling and running. Oh. Yeah, so at the time, when I got to model, I went to Paris. I was on the runway, just walking. I was like, okay, this is, this is so much easier than running, because running is so painful. I was like, this is so much easier. Let me just try and go with this. So then, yeah, the rest is history. Then I was based in London. I was based in New York. I've been to Tokyo, you know, everywhere. <laughs> modeling i've done amazing work for people like victoria secrets i mean mac cosmetics i've shot for vogue you know and I, i've been on big big billboards in times square which was i don't know it was really really amazing this is the supermodel we know today i was so grounded i was so you know my roots were really you know inside of me so whatever it is that i did was just purely work. I go, they make me up, I put on the heels, I shoot or walk, come back, remove everything and I'm back to Ajuma, the girl from Trukana. You know, I've, I saw, I've seen models when I got into the industry. I saw Naomi Campbell, I saw um, Alec, I saw all these people, they were like almost like 40 and so on and they hadn't yet started families or settled and things like this. I thought I'm not going to be like that. <laughs> I want to start my family. I, I left modeling quite early to go and have my babies <laughs> so I can snap back and then go back and start modeling again. So that was my plan. I did that. I left and then went, had my children and then came back and established my, my, my business also here, which was casting and model management. Yes, and also, of course, my, um, my um, charity organization as well. Ajuma takes us back in time to Turkana, where she was born. I mean, my mother had me when she was a teenager. She was pregnant with me when she was a teenager. So she went, I mean, it was so hard for us to make um, ends meet, as my mother was very, very young. But luckily, we got, um, um, we were taken in by a Swedish family, both me and my mother, because they saw how she was struggling to make it with a little baby. They took us in and, um, yeah, and um, they, sort of, they, they sort of rescued me, and that is the reason why I am here today. But then the thing is that what I saw, my extended family and friends, what they were going through, of course, they, they, mean, they were still going to classes under, this, un, un, under a tree. You know, they had to write on their floor, on, 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 the, on the sand and so on. So there was no books. There was no pens and pencils. You know, there was not even structures for a classroom. Although she was fortunate to get a scholarship and attend a local international school, thoughts of the children she left back in Turkana kept haunting her. The thing is that coming from Turkana, these arid lands, everybody's traditional, we live in huts, you know, we run around barefoot in the hot sun, and then by, by seven years old, I was put in a boarding school, British, private British um, boarding school. So for me already, that was such a big difference for me, you know. So I felt like, of course, I, was, I felt like out of place somehow, like most of my school life, because I was skinny, I was tall, I was pararad. <laughs> you know, the only thing that worked for me <laughs> was Vaseline, petroleum, jelly, lotions didn't, didn't work on my skin. But anyways, so that was me as um, growing up. I was still, you know, I felt different and awkward. And then also I was, of course, teased about my tone of my skin, my skin color, my dark skin. It's always been there in my subconscious that um, I'm obligated to go back 
and um, give back to these communities. So, like, people, people can be able to live a dignified life like um, I got the chance to. Upon returning to Kenya and starting the Ajuma Foundation, she wanted to give back to her Turkana community. So as I hail from the pastoralist communities, I feel like I'm more acquainted with the issues that go on over there because I've lived it, I've seen it. And um, yeah, school books, I felt like with my foundation, if I go and give food today, you know, then leave that food is gonna finish and then then what right so i felt i should give them a more sustainable i should arm them with something more sustainable which is education and i, I mean I, I would facilitate that by by um by providing school writing material because i know from you know from childhood there are children who used to sit at home because they were chased out of school because they had nothing to write on you know just basic writing material can actually like you know um can actually alter your life negatively. The Ajuma Exercise Books Project has so far benefited schools and pupils in parts of Kenya's arid and semi-arid lands, including Turkana, Isiolo, Samburu and Kwale. The project aims to improve access to education for deserving students in hard-to-reach and underprivileged areas. The Ajuma Exercise Books Initiative plays a small part in promoting understanding of ethnic diversity in Kenya. I, I use myself, uh, myself as a muse, so I um, illustrated myself in the different Kenyan cultures. Um, so this is the Trukana culture. And then also at the back, I get to show them within the Kenyan map where Trukana is, the county of Trukana is, and then also um, how to greet in Trokana because I feel then I tell them the next time they see a Trokana they can greet them in you know in Trokana. How do you say that? Um, this is Ejoha and then um, you reply Ejohonoi or Ejo yeah so I also have um, of course I have to represent our Swahili sisters and brothers so I have this illustration of me in, in, um, in Swahili as well. And then at the back, I get to show the children where the, 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 where the county is, where the Swahili people come from, and also how they greet as well. Um, then, of course, we have our Maasai. They have their own different names. This is Naisenya, the Trukana is Akidor, the Swahili one is called Pendo. Yeah, so this is the Maasai. I get them to show what the Maasai regalia looks like. And then at the back, I also show them where the Maasai people come from, the county, and then also how to greet in Maasai. And then the thing is that usually when I hold the books up for the kids, they, they, they usually can't tell what tribe it is. So this is really an important um, thing that they need to um, get to know. Um, so this is Samburu. Yes. Also, the same thing at the back. I show them where the Samburu County is, and then also how to greet in Samburu. Yes. <laughs> and then I have here Mumbi, the Kikuyu, illustration of me. At the back, the same thing, where the Kikuyu come from, the county, and then also how to greet in Kikuyu. So this I made for, from class four to class eight. But when I was on the ground giving out the books, the little children were just like, they all came and they were like so sad that I didn't have any books for them. So I decided to illustrate one for the little ones as well. So I used my, um, my niece, Pendo. I did an illustration of her. So these are the books of the lit with the little ones from nursery school till class three. Yeah, and then I've just put for them animals at the back. Yeah, <laughs> so that's the Trukana, Swahili, Samburu. We just have different um, animals at the back. From the runway to hard to reach and underprivileged areas. So I just started this March and we've already reached more than 10,000 children. Of course, we're trying to get through the whole country. Yeah, I'm not going to come and just, you know, give back to my community alone. There's loads of other children out there that need um, my help, yeah, this kind of support. I wanted to transform lives. I wanted to be able to... Um, help the underdog, you know? I wanted to lift communities that are forgotten, those marginalized communities, because that is where I go. I go to schools where there is not even roads, right? It takes me hours and hours to find them. Ajuma Nasenyana aims to improve accessibility to education for children in these communities. Mm. Oh.